Hallelujah. Are you ready for the word of God? Open up your Bibles to Psalms 37. Oh, let's do it right. Open up your Bibles. Psalms 37. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Psalms 37. Today I want to speak to the fathers, to the grandfathers, and to the hope I become a father in the futures. Amen. Um, and also I want to speak to the wives, to the daughters, and to the ones that hope to become a wife one day. Uh, I'm teaching a message I'm calling a good man, a good man. Um, Pastor Carlos Ortiz was an incredible man. And as wonderful as a pastor he was, he was even a greater father. Uh, I don't have any wounds from my dad, but I have continual blessings. Uh, he's a good man. Amen. And I remember when I was a kid, um, I was playing football. And I had broken my leg in the game. And uh, even though I was lying there on the field and the coach was getting ready to call an ambulance, my parents walked out onto the field. And as me immediately when I saw my dad, I shouted at him. I said, Dad, pray. Because to me, I, it wasn't about what my leg felt like. All I knew is, you know, I'm playing my, one of my first football games. I got to play some more. And I need to get back in this game. I mean, the team's going to lose without me. You know, so I said, Dad, pray. And, it, you know, my dad was, was a little set back by that. I didn't knew, know that. But, see, I knew, I knew he was a man of God. And I've seen God use them to pray for others who were sick and they would get healed. So when I saw my dad, he was my way out. And I said, Dad, pray. And uh, so my dad, you know, he prayed. And I, stood, I jumped up on my feet and I banged my leg three times and I ran back into the game and I was healed. And uh, my father told my mother, he said, you know, I didn't heal him. It was his faith that healed him. You know, he had faith. But see, my father created such a, an example for me that, you know, I could believe that God can do anything through my dad. Amen. And I want to talk to you about being a good man because having a good life, as far as your children are concerned, it's not a hit or a miss. It's not something that might happen or, or might not happen. It is a product of the seeds that are sown into their life as they grow up. It's not a coincidence that I'm here standing on the pulpit preaching the gospel. It's just a product of the vision that my heavenly father had for me. And he blessed me with two amazing parents that spoke words of faith inside my life. Amen. I, I remember sharing this testimony uh, about going into the juvenile system and I had a certain amount of time to spend with uh, these teenage boys who every one of them had had a difficult life and every one of them had committed crimes and now they were they were paying for their 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 mistakes and I was there because I wanted to show them a father figure so that their life they would have some sort of model or some sort of inspiration so they can have a, a blessed life. And I only had a, a, a little bit of time, but before I could teach them anything, they needed to believe that what I had to share with them was of value. So I, I spent, spent time with them, and I began to tell them a story. I said, I want to tell you my dream. And I, I said, this is my dream, that I'm going to be very old one day and gray. And I'm going to be seated, seating on a rocket chair in the front of my house, watching all my great-grandkids playing in the front yard. And that my wife was going to come and she was going to bring me an ice-cold lemonade. And that I was going to see her and take the lemonade and then I was going to pinch her on the behind. <laughs> and I looked at them and I said, how many of you want that too? 
And all the, the young men said, that's what I want too. That God had blessed me with long life, with peace, prosperity, love, and he blessed my children as well. How many of y'all want that same life too? Amen. And it doesn't just happen. You just don't get there. It's a product of the seeds that have been sown inside you and the seeds that you've sown inside others. Amen. Uh, you know, I, I, I've been wanting to share this with those that are getting ready to go to school. But, you know, there's, there's students like my daughter. She's getting ready to go to college. And when she gets there, she's going to have her own unique challenges. But she needs to see herself as a seed being sown into new ground. And then when she gets there, even though it might be difficult, if she perseveres, encourages herself, and doesn't give up, she will blossom. She will give forth fruit. She will grow into become a mighty tree. Amen? And that's the way everything is in our life. The Bible says as long as the earth exists, seed time and harvest. Amen? And so it doesn't matter if it's finances or it doesn't matter if it's, it's uh, our, our own personal relationships. Whatever we sow into, if we sow good seeds, we're going to reap a good harvest. Amen? Now, go to Psalms 37. Verse 23 and 24 it says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though we fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Now, as a father, we are examples of who our heavenly father should be. When we walk according to the Lord, people will see glimpses of what our heavenly father is like. When we follow the Lord, we become an example of being a protector, a provider, a healer, a lover. These are part of the fruits of our life because we are, being, we are following the Lord. Our steps are ordained by God. Amen. The Bible says a good man follows the steps of Jesus. Amen. So in adversity, we will never be defeated. God will restore us even when we slip and we fall and we lose. We will, we will not stay down and defeated. But God will be our strength and he will be the lifter of our head. He will lift us back up and he will begin the process of restoration. Amen. Because our steps are ordained by the Lord. They're ordered by God. Amen. So it's not about how gifted and talented or life circumstances, how difficult and how great the battle or the storm that comes your way. It's about how great the God that's inside your heart is. How wonderful are the seeds of the word of God placed inside of you. When you do a good job as parents putting these seeds inside your children's life, you do not have to be concerned about their future. I am not concerned about the future of my two daughters. I know me and my wife, not only did we put God's word inside of them, but we also lived the life in front of them. We have become examples of what God can do in, in someone's life. So when they go through their times, because everybody goes through stuff, and when they go through those seasons, I know that the seeds that are inside of them are greater than whatever storm comes their way. And even if they fall and they stumble along the way, I know that God will lift them back up and restore them. Amen? Amen. So I'm not fearful about their future because I know me and my wife did a good job sharing the love of Jesus with them. Amen? So what is in your heart will come out and it will produce good and bad. And as parents, if you put good things inside your children's life, they're going to rise up, and when they go through those seasons, those good things will come out. But if you put bad seeds in there, if you put seeds of anger, seeds of bitterness, unpatient, fear, when they go through those seasons in their life, 
those seeds are going to rise up as well. Amen. As parents, we have the responsibility. As fathers, we have the responsibility to shape and mold our children in the way they must go. And we don't do it by fear. We do it by love. We do it through encouragement. We do it by speaking God's word inside of them. We put them in environments that they can hear the word of God. So many people talk about how the generation that has been ri that's rising up, the young adults, many of them have walked away from every type of morality. But if you study their life, they didn't grow up hearing God's word. They never met Jesus Christ. They don't know what the truth is, so they're lost and they're confused. And they follow feelings. And they have no room for God because they don't know that God exists. Amen. But not your kids. Amen. Say, not my children. My children are going to know the word of the Lord. Amen. And they're not going to be lost like a boat without a sail. They're going to stand. They're going to have their feet on the rock of their salvation. Amen. Praise God. Now, the word of God is the greatest seed. By hearing and speaking the word of God over our children's lives and over our own life, the seeds begin to take root in the heart and they produce a harvest. When I was a young child, me and my brother, we would stay up waiting for our father to come up because every night my dad would, would sit with us and he didn't read his books, but what he, well, every now and then he would read the word of God, but most of the time he would sit and just begin to speak and tell us stories, tell us things about where he came from and our family. He gave me heritage and history. He talked to me about how God changed his life. He told me stories about what the Lord did through his ministry when he would go to different churches and different places to pray and minister for people. I grew up listening to those things and me and my brother, we wouldn't leave the house until, I mean, we wouldn't go to sleep until, until we heard those things at nighttime. So he was modeling for me what the future of my life would become, amen? And I want to encourage you, fathers, you are modeling before your family. To your daughters, you're modeling what to expect of a husband. If you're abusive to your wife, if you degrade your children, if you're impatient with others, if you treat those that maybe you have some sort of authority over in a negative way, your sons are going to grow up the same way. Your daughters are going to marry the same man. Because they don't know what a real man is other than the one that you put before them. And I, I charge you in the fear of the Lord to make the corrections in your life and allow God to change your heart so that before them, when they see you, they don't see you, but they see Jesus. Your daughters will not marry the wrong man if you make sure that that man that comes to marry them has to live up to your standard. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I look forward to the opportunity for that man to come over my house. Because he must be some incredible man for my daughters to want to fall in love with them. Amen. For you young ladies, listen, I know they're cute. But cute wears off. Amen. Cute doesn't stay around when the babies are crying and there's needs in the house. Cute will not stay to love you when everybody else is running away. Cute will get you divorced because they're like the wind. If they don't have character and integrity, they're not worthy of your hand. Amen. Amen. Now, if you get the whole package, praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. They have to be someone that you see that says, you know what? This is a man that would be an incredible father. This is a man that would be an incredible husband. Amen. 
they have to have a foundation with God. If they don't know God, run. I'll make it really easy for you. Ladies, I'm talking to ladies now. For those that are believing God for husbands, I want to give you the, uh, an entry exam. Okay? How you know that this is someone that could be considered as marrying possibilities. Okay? I'm going to make it real simple. Okay? Ask them. Are you a tither? Uh, uh, uh. Why that? Why does it always go back to giving to the church, Pastor? Because a person who tithes fears the Lord, and if they fear God, they fear God's way. That that if they disobey God's ways, they know that there is a punishment for that. And if they're tithing, it's because they're honoring God. If they honor God, they honor you. Hello. I wish I could talk more about that. Amen. But they didn't put the locks on the doors, and I know you guys would get up and leave. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, fathers, I'm going back to you now. You are supposed to model a life worth living for your sons and for your daughters. Amen. Uh, as a father, let me just give three things, uh, uh, areas that you, you model. Number one, you model the fear of God. You model the fear of God. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you fear God, you know, if you show that you walk according to his ways, your children will see that and it will inspire them to reach out. If, they, if you had a relationship with your heavenly father that it changed the way you act and the way you talk and the way you walk, it changed the way, as you, the way you spend your finances, that you're always honoring God, you're always looking to be a blessing to others, your children will see that. And they will begin to fear the Lord and they will desire to have that relationship with their heavenly father the way you have yours. Amen. So number one, you fear, you fear, you have the fear of God in your life. Number two, you have character and integrity. That is so important. If you say you're going to do it, do it. Hello? If you say you're going to do something, do it. Amen. Amen. Now, I know there are some th times that you don't do certain things, but if you say it, be faithful to do it. You know, I always marvel how children are. They remember every word that you say, but you promised, but you promised, but you promised. They're real quick at saying that. They don't remind you that you told them, listen, if you don't do your homework, you're going to get punished. They don't come up to you and say, but you promised you were going to punish me. <laughs> but they remember, you promised I was going to go to the mall. You promised you were going to take me here. You promised I was going to be able to talk to my friends. Amen. <laughs> but character and integrity, things you do openly and things you do in secret, you have to have character and integrity. God will reward you. Some, they say, well, pastor, no one's looking. I could act this way. No, God will reward you. If you do the things in the secret according to the ways of God, God will reward you openly. Amen. If you talk a certain way in church, but you talk another way at home, your kids are going to look at you and say, these things of God, that's, that's just for hypocrites. Because my father was a blessing in the church, but he was a curse at home. Of course, I'm not talking to anybody here. I'm talking to those that are watching through the airwaves right now. Amen. So character and integrity are very important. And character and integrity, the whole world is watching. If you're going to tell people about the love of God, they're going to want to see what's in your life. I get letters. I'm going to tell you the truth. I get letters for people who one day they say, you know what, I'm going to run with God. I'm excited about God. And they start running with God and, and they go out and they start doing the things of the Lord. And amazing how many blessings come their way. But then they get a bad day and they get discouraged on life. And next thing you know, it's like they're living like the devil. And instead of blessing everybody, they're cursing everybody. everybody. And what happened was, this is true. This has happened many times. They, they come and they're on their way growing with God and they step out and they, and they walk and they tell everybody, oh yeah, God is blessed. And they, 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 they want to talk about church and they want to talk about God and they're excited about it and they ask them, what church you go to? Faith pleases God. Praise the Lord. Awesome. Blessing, miracles, signs of wonder, all these wonderful things. But then they have a bad day and instead of blessings, they start cursing everything. 
And next thing you know, that same person they cursed is sending me a letter saying, if that is what a Christian's like, I don't want it. Of course, nobody here. I'm talking about those that are on TV. <laughs> Amen. It's the secret things. Amen. So this walk with the Lord, you got to press to God for your peace. You got to press to God for, for your walk with peace. Amen. Don't give up on what the Lord is doing. Keep on walking in this character and integrity. Hold yourself to the standard of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. And the third thing I want to tell you about modeling your life before your family is you have to have a work ethic. That's the second week in a row I said it. God doesn't bless lazy people. Amen. Tell your neighbor, God doesn't bless lazy people. You have to have a work ethic and you do things with excellence. You work hard. You serve others as if you're serving Jesus Christ. Amen. And God will promote you and God will bless you. Amen. Someone says, I come to Jesus so I don't have to work. Well, you came to the wrong person because God doesn't work, that, doesn't work that way. Amen. Matter of fact, God has more work for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I encourage you guys to live this life and model it before your family. Model it in the love of the Lord. And like seeds planted in a garden, they will produce in your children's life. They will produce in your marriage life as well. Amen. They will produce in your, in your wife's life. You know, my wife, I've been married, uh, we're on our 20th year now. We don't call them uh, anniversaries. We call them honeymoons. And it's just something that we always make a mistake. So we're on our 20th honeymoon. Amen. 20 years of honeymoon, me and my wife. And my father used to say this, I don't want another wife. It took me this long to, to train this one. And uh, that's the same way with me. I don't want another wife. It took me this long to, to train my wife. Amen. But I started doing something that is kind of unique. And um, it started back in February. Um, I just was challenged. I'm not telling you all the reasons, but I'm giving you just one of the reasons. I, I wanted to, to commit myself to telling my wife I love her personally and also publicly. So I went on, I'm on Facebook every day, and every day before the end of the day, I make sure to say some way of saying, I love you, Veronica Farias Ortiz. <laughs> And the funny thing about it is I started doing this uh, back in February, and this is, this is no joke. Um, I've had people pull me aside. I would see people like in stores or whatever. I've had pastors pull me aside, more than one. And they tell me, Kevin, you telling your wife you love her every day? You need to stop that. They said, Kevin, my wife is saying, why don't you do that for me? <laughs> and Kevin, that's a, that's, that's a standard. I'm thinking about defriending you so that she won't see your post no more. <laughs> and this is true. But you know what happened is I started seeing other men start making posts on their Facebook of just creative ways of saying that they love their wife. Amen. But I tell you, I didn't do it for anybody else, but I did it for her. And ever since I've been doing that, she hasn't threatened to kill me. <laughs> I've actually, I've seen a blessing come out of it. She even sent me a message the other day. She says, you're making me feel like we're in high school again. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just think it's awesome. You know, and I see its seeds being planted, and I'm reaping a harvest. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I encourage you all to start doing things that sow into your loved one's lives. There's different things that God will inspire you to do that will produce a harvest. Because, you know, you don't know what your child is missing. You don't know what your wife is missing or what a friend is missing. 
But when God starts speaking to you about sowing unique seeds, don't be afraid to step out in faith and do it. Amen? And as you do it, watch how the Lord begins to use those seeds to produce an incredible harvest in their life. Amen? I pray every single man here gets to grow old and gray with your grandkids running it, great grandkids running in the front yard, and you get to pinch your wife's behind. Amen? <laughs> praise the Lord. Give God praise. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I, I want to ask all the fathers to come to the front and be with me. I want to pray over you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow, what an army. What a blessing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. You guys are a blessing. I honor you. Praise the Lord. You all have an incredible job. Like I said, to be a provider, protector, a healer, comforter an example and you're not by yourself the Lord is your strength the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord in other words there's not a single step you'll take that God is not there with you and he'll help you you know just like speaking about me, me and my wife we've grown in our relationship I love her more today than I did back when I first met her. It's not that I didn't love her. It's just that I've learned to love her in ways that I didn't even know I could. And we've grown. That seed of love have grown. And same thing with your relationships. You know, it might be a certain way today, but if you keep on working that ground and sowing that seed in your child's life and your marriage life and in every area, even your finances, whatever area, you will see the harvest. But I know sometimes it gets difficult. The enemy comes and brings discouragement. You see things one way and you don't understand why does it have to be this way. But what I'll say is with great effort and work will come a great harvest. And even though it might be a struggle today, what is a struggle today will produce a great blessing tomorrow. So don't give up. Don't get tired. When you're weary, you have a heavenly father that will come and comfort you. He will send his presence to strengthen you. He will give you his Holy Spirit to give you wisdom and knowledge and help lead you along the path. There's no greater wound in the life of people, at least in my experience as a, as a pastor, one of the greatest hurts in the hearts of people or ones that their fathers put there. And you might not have had a great, great father like I did, but you, every one of you have an amazing father that's in heaven. Your heavenly father is the example that I encourage you to live up to. Amen. And for you all, I pray that you will never put any hurt or wound inside your wife or your children and if you have I pray that God's grace and mercy will come and minister to them and bring healing as if it never happened and whatever has been stolen the Lord will restore I want you to hold out your hands like this and I want you to look at your hands God has given you these hands to be a blessing over and over in the word of God when it was time for the father to leave this world and they would call their children and place their hands upon their children and release a blessing your hands are anointed to release blessings and I want you to see yourself that way that God has anointed you to release blessings upon your family I want to pray over you 
Father, I thank you that these are anointed men of God. Fathers that receive the blessing from the, their heavenly father to release it upon their family. And Lord, I ask you to help them wherever they're weak, whatever areas they might have messed up in. Lord, let your grace be upon them. Lord, heal their life and heal their family. Strengthen them, Father God, to become greater than they ever dreamed of. Holy Spirit, touch them. Restore their joy. Bring your peace inside their home. Let them rise up to become great in the kingdom of God. Let them recognize that they have an anointing that comes from heaven that's for their family. In Jesus' name. Now, gentlemen, we're going to do something very unique. I want you to turn around and face your family. If your husband or your father's up here, I want you to get out of your chair and come with them. And gentlemen, I'm going to ask you all to put your hands upon them and pray God's blessing upon their life. Speak things that are from your heart that you want them to know that you're asking God to help you. So wives, children, come and be with your father. Just go and spread out a little bit in the church so you have room to pray over them. And just under this anointing, just speak whatever's in your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your children. Face your father. Face your, face your husband. And fathers, just ask God to give you wisdom. Father, we pray your blessing upon them. Father, we pray your anointing upon them. Father, we pray that you will help them, Father God. Lord, that you will rise them up. Father, we pray for their future husband or their future wife. Father, we pray over their school, Father God. Lord, we ask you to help us wherever we are weak at. We release your anointing upon them. Holy Spirit, speak to their heart. We bless them, Lord. This is our children. This is our family. And we lift them up to you right now in Jesus' name. Just speak whatever's in your heart, fathers. Hallelujah. Let the anointing of God come. Let the anointing of God come. There is, there's an anointing right there. There's an anointing of healing that's flowing right now in Jesus' name. There's anointing healing. There's things that are being broken right now in Jesus' name. Things that are being broken that have been there. No longer a part of your life in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. And just begin to speak a blessing over them. Speak a blessing over the future. Father, I thank you that you're strengthening them to prosper. Father, I thank you that you are with them every step of the way. Father, I thank you that you are giving them wisdom and knowledge in the ways they must go. That you're answering their heart's prayer in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name, Father. Hallelujah. Now just love on your family. Just go and love on them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Everyone else in the church, stand up on your feet and just worship God and thank God for the work that he's doing inside their life. more than welcome to go back to your chair if you like to. Let's worship the Lord. Jesus. 
glorify your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Veronica, come on up. Praise the Lord. Fathers, we love you. And we bless you in Jesus' name. And I believe that the Lord is doing a work today that doesn't end at this altar. The Spirit of God's going to follow you home. Amen. And for those that were not even here, I pray that the hand of the Lord goes and touch them in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. God has so much for you. Everyone close your eyes for a moment. In this wonderful Father's Day, there are some that don't know God as their Heavenly Father. And it'd be a shame if we stopped the service without giving you opportunity to give your heart to Jesus. The Father loved you so much that he sent his only son to die on the cross for your sins and to give you a new life. This is the free gift of salvation and it only takes faith If you can believe today, today will be your day of salvation. If you've never given your heart to the Lord, or maybe you have, but you walked away and stumbled along the way, today is your time to get right with God. With all eyes closed, if you'd like to give your heart to Jesus, when I count to three, I want you to lift up your your right hand so I can see you. This is your day. On the count of three. One, two, three. If you want to give your heart to Jesus, lift it up. God bless you. 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 Anyone else? Five more seconds. God bless you. I see in the back. God bless you guys over there. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can put your hands down. And I want everyone to say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus. Forgive me of all my sins. Come inside my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Father God, I'm coming home. Use me for your glory. I confess. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. My name is written in heaven in Jesus name amen praise the Lord can we give God praise (laughs) praise God well I love you all and I thank you guys for coming to worship God with us amen honey will you say a couple words and pray for us as we leave amen praise God praise God First, I want to say that we have a gift in the back for all the fathers, so please pick up your gift. It's a very special, unique gift for you. Um, And we're so thankful to God that, you know, every father here chose to spend Father's Day first in the presence of their Heavenly Father. And because of that, you are so blessed. And families, children, wives, you have the most amazing, blessed father amen Amen. Amen. so treat him like a king today well we're gonna let him watch soccer all day and cater to him (laughs) but praise god let's just pray and dismiss father we thank you for what you're doing in the lives of these great and amazing fathers lord your anointing is upon them your wisdom your knowledge and your understanding lord is upon them and lord we thank you father that you have made them to be the head of their house, Father, the head and not the tail. Lord, we thank you, Father, for your hand dwells upon them, Lord, that every difficulty they face
face. Every discouragement, Father, is brought down, Father. Every mountain is turned into a molehill, Father God. And we thank you that your anointing sees them through. Your word sees them through through every situation they face, Lord. They are more than conquerors. And Lord, we just thank you today, Father, for the great and mighty word that you've planted in our hearts. Lord, we are a blessing. And everywhere we go, we are a blessing to others. Father, bless their homes, bless their children, bless their workplace, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your hand is upon every single person here. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless you guys. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.